Welcome to God's Food for Thought. We're continuing with Applying the Parables of Jesus. And we're going to look at the parable of the lost son. And we're going to do it in two parts. First part is today, and the second part will be tomorrow. But just for a moment, let's take a mo and just a moment of our time. And I want you to think about how God has blessed you. And let's just thank him for a moment. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Our heart is open to you. And we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to show us your love and your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for the life you've given us. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and true. In Jesus' name. The parable of the lost son, Luke chapter 15. To illustrate, starting with verse 11, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want to share, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Now, the father is going to represent Father God, and the wayward son is going to represent us. And we need to understand, back in that day, it was absolutely against Jewish tradition to divide up an estate early. But it's interesting, it shows how God will honor our decisions and our choices, even if they are unwise. So the father divided his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. How often people waste their lives in an attempt to run away from God, to go away from home, from our father in heaven. Well, in verse 14, about the time his money ran out, another thing happened. A great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. They didn't have grocery markets. So you could just go and get food back in those days. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. This is going really low for a Jewish boy because the pigs were absolutely unclean animals. You weren't supposed to have anything to do with. So here he is feeding the pigs. And the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. Well, Jesus is using this parable to show us how absolutely wrong for us it is to turn away from God and to turn away from our Heavenly Father. He goes on, it says, verse 17, And when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have enough food to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. You know, sometimes God will allow things into our lives to where we say, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of running away from God and I need to turn to him. Verse 18, he says, I will go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. What a difference in this young man. Before, he had, a, he had all the food he wanted and everything, but he wanted to go and get into the flesh and get into the fallen world. And you know what? It'll steal everything you have. 
And God will finally get you to the point to where you say, you know what? I'd be better off going back to the Lord. You know, I guess I need to start going back to church. Well, verse 20, he's been humbled now. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. This and the culture of that day, this would never happen. If a son did what he did and turned away from his father, the father w would, in his position, say, you need to come to me. You need to come to me. But breaking the whole tradition, Jesus shows us how much the father, our father in heaven, loves us. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son embraced him and kissed him. This is the son that had squandered all his money, all that the father had given him, all that the father had worked for all those years. Just squandered it in sin. And his son now was humbled. I've sinned against heaven and you, father. What a difference. What a difference. This is the, the difference between Christianity, following the true God, and all other religions. You will not find the God of those other religions running after someone who was lost. God so loved the world, he gave us his only begotten son. Well, it's Jesus, of course, is telling us this parable. And we see in verse 21, his son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you and I am no longer worthy of being called your son so the son is just ready he says you know I'm going to pay for what I did and and uh, and I, I don't care if I never have my old position back I, I just want to come back to you but look what Jesus in this parable he's showing us as in heaven so on earth Look what he says. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe into the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and a sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. This is just part one of this parable. It shows that running away from our father will not work. The world's a tough place. He didn't find a lot of compassion in the world, even when he was starving to death. But the one who loved him the most is the one who ran after him. The one who wanted to restore him. The one who wanted him. He was more important than the stuff that he squandered. You know, God wants us to love people more than things. And the love of our Heavenly Father for us, no matter what you've squandered in your life and and all of that, he, he wants you with him. And he's always there with arms wide open to embrace you. We need to give thanks for his love and thanksgiving that no matter if we've squandered everything, we can just turn right back to him and he'll receive us if we're humble if we repent as this prodigal son had done. God's grace is absolutely amazing. It never ends. His mercies are new every morning. 
The grace He can show you now is the grace He will show you forever. But the sooner we get back with Him, the sooner we're going to have joy and peace and love back into our soul. Tomorrow we're going to look at part two and look how the other son looks at this. It's a great example that we need to all learn. We need to rejoice in the good things of God and not compare ourselves to each other. This has been God's Food for Thought. Right now we're going to sing a little bit of Amazing Grace. Amazing grace.